Well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess it's uh, time for yet another exciting and fun-filled episode of your show. That's right. It's the Kickout Crew. want to thank everybody for uh, cashing in on last week's episode. I hope you climbed the ladder. And hey, maybe uh, reach your hand up there, grab that briefcase, and maybe change your life. Who knows? But you know, it is life-changing. Uh, this new episode of your show. want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, you know, Money in the Bank was last week. We got a different uh, shenanigans this week. But uh, if you want to, you know, see all the shenanigans, you should follow us on all of our social media platforms. It is Kick Out Crew, you know, because it's your show, so we keep it simple. And uh, before we get going, I just want to say, oh, uh, welcome everybody to the new episode. And uh, I guess it's time for... Uh, a little ad break from uh you know one of our friends or a couple of our friends it is a uh podcast you should be checking out and uh you know i have said too much so i might as well just get to their videos so hey josh take it away Hi, I'm Brad. This is Josh, and we are the host of the We'll Bring the Popcorn Entertainment Podcast. Each and every week, we'll be bringing you the latest stories from the world of TV and film, as well as breakdowns of the TV shows that we're currently watching and all of the films that are hitting theaters that we go and see as well. You can find us on YouTube, along with all the popular podcasting platforms for our social media. Anything else you want to know about us, you can head over to we'llbringthepopcorn.com. We drop new episodes each and every Monday. We hope you'll take the time to check us out. And wasn't that a good video? Y'all should check them out. And I, uh, you know, they're great friends and I hope they keep doing good stuff. And, uh, you know, the cool thing about movies is there's always a way to talk about them. So they're, you know, they're never going to run out of uh, ideas. Everything will be fresh. And you know what is fresh? I guess, uh, hell, I'm, I'm trying to read the title of this outline, but I guess I'm going to go to Brainstain. Maybe not. It's been a while. So, Brad, good to see you again, brother. Hey, what do you have this week? All right, so what was the most important thing that, well, I guess there are a lot of you that are listening now. It was last week. But what was the most important thing that happened this week? I'll tell you what it was. Get a text from my wife, and she goes, my Facebook has been hacked. So I'm like, yeah. all right, so then what, what do I care? <laughs> you know what I mean? So she says, go do me a favor. Go on to your account and check to see what's going on on my account. So I go on. I hit the Facebook button, and I'm logged out. All right. So what do I do? So both of us are hacked? No, 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 no. Not buying that one at all. I do the responsible thing and go to, I hit Facebook and Google and say news. Oh my gosh, an outage. An outage that has, that has destroyed us. Social media is down. What is everyone going to do? Here's the best part of the whole thing. Everybody's down. Who the fuck cares? Thank what, you. What, I, you telling me I can't check in at Chick-fil-A in the next half hour? How is anybody hey, going to hey. know I'm there? How are they going to know? Did you like, know your password? I did not know my password because that yeah, password is, one. that was the only thing I was nervous about because that password is older than my phone number. <laughs> so if, they, if they're going to, I think I have a Hotmail account that might be linked to that that I can't get into either. So yes. <laughs> yeah. But then this is going on for, I guess, a couple hours at least. So then I go to the, uh, I kept checking it, you know, every 20 minutes or so. And I hit Facebook and there was two accounts that I could click my, uh, my, uh, click on. Guess what they were? One was Brad Stanton. One was Devin Dowling. It said, ah! which one of these accounts is yours? Devin Dowling is just so freaking random. <laughs> Brad Stanton. So that only, wait a minute. That just means you tried to log into his account. That's the reason why it would be on your phone. That's the reason the whole thing went down. <laughs> no. <Because> I, um... <laughs> And then eventually I just clicked mind? on Brad Stanton. I just ignored the Devin Dowling thing. I didn't think that was a good route, right? And, and it's uh, always a good thing to ignore Devin. Go ahead. And then miraculously, the world was back the way it was meant to be. So exactly. Media, thank God. <laughs> I know what happened. Do you not know what happened? Uh, what? Tom from MySpace got pissed and hacked. <laughs> he hacked Facebook and took him down for like four or five hours trying to be everybody's best friend again. But I think Zach Zuck Zuckerberg, whatever his name is, That's Mark it. Zuckerberg, yeah, I think Matt, he yeah. finally got, got it and straightened out, and Tom ain't our friend no more. Ah. So uh, that's the only ranting thing I have this week, but I want to talk about my WrestleMania weekend, because that is coming, that is almost upon us, it's within less than a month at this point as this airs. So this, is, let me just tell you what I got tickets to, 
okay? I have tickets to all the WWE events. So I have night one, night two. And then I bought nosebleeds for SmackDown, Raw, Hall of Fame, NXT. Why? Because I don't know if I want to go to any of those. And here's why. Busted Open is going to be there that weekend at the 2300 Arena. Yeah. WrestleCon is going to be there that weekend. Okay, so that's the Sheridan. And every wrestler, anybody is there that's not WWE, basically. Yeah. Um, there are four, I think, four GCW shows that weekend. There's a Ring of Honor show that weekend. Battleground Wrestling at the 2300 Arena. Plus, I mean, we've heard three things from Alex Kane that have nothing to do with any of this. I want to watch some independent wrestling. Yeah. So, what would you guys... No, and, and one more thing. Adam O'Neill's freaking going to be there. I want to hang out and just hang out. I want to drink at the bar with Adam. I want to drink at the bar with uh, Allison Faye. I want to I want to drink uh, Coach Rosie, Coach Keith. Let's go. Let's go. I might not want to go to any of this shit. Yeah, hoop, uh, both hoops, uh, you know. Both hoops. There is going to be, there is too much to do. Too much to do. So of the WrestleMania, of the, of the WWE stuff, what do you guys recommend I skip? And what do you recommend I go to? Now, all right, hold on. NXT's at 1130 in the morning on uh saturday i'd go to that and then well, I have timing, but i have to run out of there if i want to go to busted open because that's at like two and that's at a different yeah, place that's from two to four yeah and guess what there might be a line you know, it's free to get be... in though so yeah it is even better for a line <laughs> I'd rather buy a ticket today but well, luckily that's... it's right there in the center of everything so you're not far off so uh, I'm good NXT, kind of get the gist of everything. Maybe go to bust it open for an hour, find out what's going on, who's going where, kind of game plan it, and then make your next move. Yeah, I'll, I'll much- be in Seattle, so it don't matter. There is too much to do. What do you think, Devin? What do you think I should be doing? So those are the two nights after Mania, right? No, or like no. the. The, Which, the Friday before and the Monday after. The Monday and the Friday, but there's still a ton of independent wrestling that's going to be going on that Friday. I'll oh, definitely go to the Hall of Fame. Maybe that's even that Thursday. Year. You know, I want to do the show. Thursday, I'm gonna... Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's going to be independent wrestling like the whole time. I really, I don't think SmackDown would be that. Like it's it's just SmackDown. Even mind, I think the, the Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame yeah. Hall of Fame and speech after is going to be pretty great. I would go to the Hall of Fame. What fucking time is that? that? <laughs> is that taped? Is that live? <laughs> nine. <laughs> I think nine p.m. Probably ten. Yeah, probably ten. The, the Hall of Fame starts no. immediately after SmackDown. Okay, ends. so it is so, live because it has been yeah, taped it is, before, it, and, it, and it is live on the Peacock Network on Peacock. So I don't know, man. I'm skipping something. I'm going to regret it. James, what are you thinking, man? Well, I wouldn't skip Hall of Fame because it only happens once a year, and this is the only time Paul Heyman is going to be inducted ever. And it's the only well, time I'm probably ever going to get to go. Matt might thing. come. You have to be there for the crowd entrance of Paul Heyman. You have to. You know Just that's gonna be like one of the that's gonna be like glass shattering type of entrance. When Paul Heyman walks on that stage, the crowd is going to lose their absolute mind. You have to be there for that. EC duh. EC duh. Here's the second ca- caveat to all this. My tickets are by myself. That um in a in a way, I think I I I I mean listen, I can't afford to bring somebody. Honestly. I mean, you gotta go, bro. Because here's the thing: if those Stone Cold rumors are true, that would be the most epic shit of all time, and you would be there. And I'm pretty sure Allison's tickets are by herself. I'm pretty sure Adam O'Neill's are by himself. So we're gonna be like, you know, it's I don't know, man. Um, I know. All right, so the Hall of Fame, you're thinking for sure, isn't the, like the isn't the isn't the Raw after uh, Mania like isn't that always a big deal? Sometimes uh, you tell me year, it hadn't been in like four years. Then that's y'all what Matt me, M said. He said, "Get over that." But that, last that, year, that, like, Cody come out and brought interrupted. Remember? Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think I make that because everything else will probably be over. No, but then I also, yeah. like one night is GCW on all of them. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, there's ones at Thursday, midnight. Friday, there's ones Saturday, at eleven in the morning. Yeah. I already know Joey Janela's thing is already sold out. I, don't know. I would say make all the uh, independent shows you can. Try to get some meet and greets in, obviously. So go to WrestleCon? Yeah. So yeah, that's well, and, 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 uh, some of the other shows, like some of the other shows. Hardy. Matt Hardy. As, as someone who has been to WrestleCon, I recommend that is like a must-go-to event. WrestleCon. Not, they might have people you might not ever get to see again. I got to text Allison. I gotta some text would that. say no. it would take you out of the stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta text these other people that are going too because I'd like to do it with them. I don't want to walk around. Yeah, yeah. 
then I want to drink beer and I want to eat. Maybe see Meanie out. Maybe see Sandman out. Yeah, maybe you hit I, by a fucking uh, you know, uh, stick. I'm definitely gonna wrestle con. I'm like the scared cane, and anxious cane. at the same time. Scared and anxious, <laughs> like happy and anxious. Like I'm excited, but I'm like, ah. I really, I really <laughs> hope that at Top Guy Weekend, Sandman comes out there and just beats the dog shit out of uh, with the cane thing that you talk shit about. He'll do it. No sick. I can maybe talk him Endo into sick, that at yeah, the yeah. bar. You know, I might huh? be able to talk him into that this weekend. <laughs> Man, man, a fly would land on you and you'd crumble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're going to hear, you know. I'm short fucking, guy uh, tough, brother. Short guy tough. Yeah. Yeah, just outside. I hope, I hope you find that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. I'm going to be talking about this for the next couple of weeks. I am excited, but like I said, I'm anxious about it. Um, It's it's a unique experience for me to go alone, you know? I would. I was <laughs> all about, like, man, bracket selling tickets to make money. But, so guess what? Guess but, what, James? Man. If you if you're not there when the glass shatters, you'll never forgive yourself. So I bet you buy two tickets because I I I, I can't afford sixteen hundred more dollars. Yeah. And what's the resale? What, what's the resale on the WrestleMania tickets? Okay, so night one is humongous. Now it's like my ticket is like sixteen hundred, so it's double. Night two is less. <laughs> I'd sell hey, my well, one. The... I'd sell my yeah. one. Get all your money back. No, nah, hey, if, pay not, for the if week night one it. goes over five grand, sell it. Yeah, well, I said that, but I yeah. do want to see the Rock. But that's what it's for. It's for the Rock, right? That's what we're talking about. Rock's gonna be on night two as well. And when, are, when are you gonna see so, him? You know, I'm never gonna see him again. Probably in the yeah. movies. Not any good ones. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's it for me, guys. We'll talk about this next week. Oh man! Well, I was uh, I was really looking forward to Mike's messages from the mouth. But, uh, <laughs> whatever, that, you know, whatever that is. But That's very you know what? <laughs> what? What? It was probably some food, soak the pickles, you know, whatever. And ranch dressing. But well, he, you know, he gets two segments for some reason. Yeah, he ain't even here. You know who is here? Adam. So Adam. And my uh, one segment. It's all you want. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. My man, James. No, you're good. Go ahead. All right. So, um, as we record, you know, we had the big Sting's last match. And I think that after everything that's happened, I believe that he deserves his own kind of deal. So, um, Revolution was amazing. Uh, but I'm just curious. Do y'all think it ended right? I, I don't mean, think we sounded as bad as we could have on our last week's episode. I just want to say that. Oh no, we were spot on, yeah. and also in the tournament. <laughs> we just didn't have the Suns. We just didn't have the Suns. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought it, I thought it ended well. I wish that the paper awesome. could have shown everything after because it didn't. Yeah. Um. They had to, they had to end on time, but I, I thought it, I wanted him to go over. I thought it was the right thing because he's in his. Oh, season. did you? Did you want him to go over? Right. So there was something uh, Bully Ray brought up on Busted Open today, and he said, "Well, do you think what Darby did? People who don't know or whatever, he went from a ladder through a pane of glass onto chairs. It was insanity." Do y'all feel like it took away from Sting Spotlight? Like it kind of overshadowed the reason why everybody was there? I do don't because I feel much? like that's I feel like that's been their thing the whole time. They both do crazy shit. I don't think that. I think they I think they stay true to their characters through this whole thing. I think except, it is, yeah. Except that it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like like pe- people do talk about that spot, don't get me wrong, but they also like it that's didn't insane, overshadow man. Sting. It didn't overshadow Sting's last match. I just give can't. a photo credit to Matt M uh, for these yeah, for this photo from Revolution. Oh, uh, he was, he was there? front row. He was front. Yeah, shocking, I know. Right? Yeah, <laughs> wasn't, he, wasn't he sideways when Darby went through there? Yeah, I like watching you, Matt's reaction when Darby jumps and he's like, "Oh!" <laughs> yeah. But you see, like how far even the glass shards just flew over, clear even to the other side of the ring, because he almost which I missed. find absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. just absolutely crazy. There was a caller that, that called in and made a good point. He said he was in a car wreck and sh- he had shattered glass. 
He said that he was picking glass pieces out of his skin for 10, 15 years. Like, just randomly, like, it was just like a scab or something to scab over. And, yeah. like, he was still picking little pieces of eye, um, glass out of his body, out of his skin. 10 or 15 they, years later. They should have let Jack Perry do that spot. So, I think they tried that and something happened. I don't know if his reactions, um, mass reaction was worse for that spot or for Bryce Remsburg's uh, refereeing. <laughs> well, that's, you know, remember Matt M on the show? His least favorite yeah. person is Bryce. So I'm, and Bryce is making it all about him during this match, right? And I'm like, Matt, what do you think of this? He goes, I just remembered how much I hate him. He's texting me right in the front row, you know, this yeah. guy. <laughs> like, I'm watching him text me. Right. <laughs> he just looks down like, oh, I'm about to get something. That's funny. I was watching Terry do the same thing when I went to um, Dynamite last week. I could, I could watch him look down, and then by the time he looked up, did it ding, my phone would go off. So I could watch funny. him in the front row messaging me. Dude, shout out to Terry and that uh, story about, like, you know, he went, uh, you know, he went, you know, to go uh, to the concessions, we'll say. And then he came back, and uh, everybody had this thing masked but him. So he's just, like, standing there. <laughs> you see, yeah. the, funny, the other funny thing is, too, the whole uh, Sky Blue spot, he saw Cabana Man sitting there. Then he got up went to the bathroom or whatever and missed the whole spot. Man. He missed Dad the whole Terry. Sky Blue spot. Yeah, that Terry. Terry. That's a Brad Stan move the all mask day. and missed the Sky Blue spot. Um. So yeah, I like the way it ended, though. Uh, overall, I like the match too. I you think it was the right them. opponents. Yeah, uh, well, because he wanted them. Yeah, and I thought, you know, I know, I know. Listen, I get Eric Bischoff's opinion on them. I just don't agree at all. I thought they played it off pretty good. Dude, they false finished, and they they did. That was a great match. I loved it. Uh, and I thought they were they were good heels, and they're still good heels as of last night. They, they yeah, played you see their fucking uh, faces, the little uh, uh whatever. I, I liked. I, I thought they were. I thought they were good. Opponents. The goatee, you know. Yeah. Folks. What do you think, Devin? Did you like it? Yeah, I th I think that Matthew and Nicholas Jackson are uh, <laughs> deceitful, deceiving. Like they're. Uh, I think they're really great heels. And now that they played a great role as EVPs, they were kind of the perfect fit to go up against Darby and Sting. They're the perfect people that can sell everywhere for Sting. He can put them through everything, and he did. Yes, and, I don't think there could have been two other people who could have been better. I mean, I'm thinking of the whole roster. I don't think there's two other guys that could have done as good. And the whole fact that he brought his kids out too, his sons as the vintage Sting. That was cool. Was amazing. That was way cool. Really cool, yeah. It was cool. I mean, it... Very cool. And like like them coming out like the Stings and then uh, Mariah May coming out like uh, the old Tony Storm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. And Keep Sammy Guevara suspended. Too. Like, it's been a good week of wrestling. What Sammy a great Guevara's thing, Devin. We'll get to that later. Sammy Guevara's out? Fuck yeah. Um, oh, man, Adam, go ahead. You good, you good. It's an amazing pay-per-view, man. Um, Swerve, Samoa Joe, Hangman Page, a uh, good match. Um... Thomas Tony Storm, Deanna Prazo. I, I, I feel like that match should have been better. Well, because it was the shortest match on the show, and it was the only yeah. women's match on the main show. Like I've said this to you guys in the group chat. It's not right. It's they, ridiculous. They have, I know that they don't have the WWE women's division, but they got a good women's division. They should. There should be at least two, three matches on that. On there should every be a couple division. at least, yeah. Just my if opinion. If they came to the TBS championship, they need to do like a number one contender for the championship. Of Something. Junior. Something. I the TBS champion was on the pre-show. The pre-show. I, I don't count that, Devin. And they and they have a lot of talent that could do that type of stuff. It's not like you're just throwing. It's not like you're throwing shit at the they fans. Like, deep, man. That's what I'm saying. Like they have the women's talent to have matches like that. You know, hell, put Stalliner in there. Put somebody in there. Like, it's not like you're just like throwing shit at the fan. You know. They're giving Serena Deep these garbage matches, and she's supposed to be well, one of the best ones in you know in the women's division. Yeah, I like Serena Deep. Um, but I just okay. feel like that match should have could have been better. Should have been better. Uh, Roger Strong being Orange Cassidy um, was a good match. Boy, that there was there was no doubt in my mind about that one though. I knew he was going to win. Just like Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson, I knew who was going to win that one. I love the way he freaking Danielson was such a dick at the end <laughs> with the shaking of the hands. And then, um, yeah, come on, come on. All right, come on. All right, never mind. Come on. <laughs> what do you think about him coming out after the Will Ospreys match? Last, last night? Um, I, I, well, my DVR cut off at five minutes after, and I did not see it. 
Dude, it, it went on for like 15 minutes after. Yeah, it's Danielson bullshit, walked dude. out Tell me. And, and stared at Will Ospreay after their match, which was a damn good match. was an excellent match. He's made mm-hmm. two people. All right, so I know these guys are already great wrestlers, but he has made, in the, w, in the AEW eyes, two wrestlers in about a week. Yeah. Number one, <laughs> number one, they should have went to a draw. Because it seemed like they kind of like, hey, you gotta, hey, here's a finish, you gotta finish, like, go, gotta finish. Number two, the tape machine should have been rolling when you know, like, the stare down, like, which it did happen, I guess. But if it would have been a draw, you know, like mono e mono, and then the uh, extra add on, you know, and then you uh, go off air. Well, I, and I didn't realize they rushed, how they was the taller than we lost, Bray. He's incredible. I knew he was tall, but I know he's bigger than Will Ospreay. Oh. I thought he was dead on the outside of the ropes there for a second, and then he uh, just comes back and starts like jumping off the ropes. That was probably his best match. Fletcher's, that was probably his best match he's had it in just AEW. Shows his talent. Yeah, because um, I like thought he was like concussed, and I was like, holy shit, this dude's fucked up. And then, like, you know, he just jumps on the ropes and like does a like springboard, whatever the fuck, and yeah, they keep going. Do you like that? How he's able to do that? Yeah. Yeah, without I selling, I know I like it. I know it's. I know that there's critics for that, but I like it. What about you? Well, I was watching the pay per view match, Takeshita versus Osprey, and I'm watching that pay per view with my little brother, and he's kind of casual fan, watches every once in a while, and it's Sting's last match, so he's watching the pay per view with us, and we're watching this match, and I'm loving it. I'm right into it, and he's like, right in the middle of it, he's like, "Man, this is terrible." Neither of them are selling at all. I can understand that. He's like, I, they just I, got I, dropped on the outside of the ring, and then they got up and sprinted for 30 more seconds. I get it. Like, That's not realistic. I just enjoy watch. I just enjoy the, the, the athleticism. Which kind of killed the rest of that match for me, and then it killed Kyle Fletcher versus Osprey. And I'm hoping that I can, like, I don't know, switch that back. But I never even really just realized Just take an that. edible next time. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. Everything's good with an edible. And I, I see your point. Supposedly, allegedly, I, I definitely see your point, man. And I mean, it, it's, I mean, I, I appreciate the athleticism because that's some stuff I know I can't do. <laughs> right. So also, it's I, like a it's momentum based instead of. Swerve did it a little bit too. Um, last night. Uh, but he did that same move, didn't he? With that jumping back up, the no sell. Yeah. Well, if you want to talk about like, King did it too. I, he, there's always been spots of it. People know selling and if you want to talk about momentum stuff. and all that stuff, like uh, Statlander versus Rio, because Rio, there's a big like difference in both of them. So you know, like instead of you know, you can't like overcorrect yourself or do nothing because Rio's so tiny. You know, like it kind of it kind of gives the, blew my mind. Hey, good stuff. I think uh, Sally is going to go heel, not for it, but whatever. Really, it looked like that. Um, good match. Uh, yeah, look, he's Tony Khan's behind Rio. But... Yeah. Sorry, Adam. What else you got, no, buddy? You're good. You're good. You're good. Uh, FTR, John Mosley, Claudio was a good match. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just whatever, what Andy. I was expecting. Senior hate tweets to Yes Man Brad. Amy, yeah, that is Yes Man Brad. No, nah, I I I like I like Moxley and uh, Claudia. Uh, All Star Eight Man. Um, I hope they do something with Wardlow. I mean, it, it... well, they're, they're 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 pushing that whole faction along. So, well, you I notice think... when Adam Cole said Wardlow wins the belt and brings it back, and he pointed directly at himself. Well, last night we'll have known what happened when Samoa Joe took on uh, Wardlow for the AEW World Championship. That's true. Last night it that is. has the potential to be a good match if it's done right. I feel like it's kind of rushed though, because I feel like we just pushed Swerve to the side all of a sudden, and he's already having to defend it again. But that's the boss town thing, right? Uh, isn't well, it? Yeah, I feel like that's the reason why because it's big business. It's boss time. Yep. Well, I'd love it if they if they if it wasn't true. Oh, just the heavy troll. I bet I doubt it. I, it's, it's got to be it's, true, man. Like you said, like the CM Punk thing, like we said that a couple weeks ago. It's going to be the, the worst kept secret in wrestling. And boss then Town and all that stuff. It's yeah. boss time in Boston. I get it. I guess. It's John Cena. <laughs> a lot of here. So I, I, 
it was, it was, it was a good pay per view. Um, I wish, like, like Brad said, I wish there was more women's matches in it because they deserve a little bit more than one match. And I, uh, I didn't count the matches, what, 10, 12 different matches? But, um, you know, shout out to Sting for, you know, 40, almost 40 years of wrestling. That's amazing. So I think it was one of their, oh, overall, I think it was one of their best pay per views they've done. I loved it. I, I sat for five and a half hours and watched, you know, everything from the pre-show on. So I think, I think it was, it was definitely worth it. Wife was away for the weekend and uh, she came home and I turned it on. <laughs> you turned the pay per on or her own? Uh, I definitely did not turn her on. <laughs> you know, oh. yeah. Well, no, they have a good pay per view, man. AEW's made some do some things. Uh, they just got Okada, and him being heel surprised me. Yeah, I liked it. Um, uh, yeah, because he needs a mouthpiece. Now he's got two. He got. <laughs> I hope they make him. A, I hope they make him an honorary EVP or something. Like well, give him, give him a part of the elite position. So. They said he's part of the elite. I mean, that's something. Yeah, they fired Kitty on TV. I guess. Yeah, that's believable. They fired her from the elite. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, God forbid they, they know that he's sick or something. No, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think AEW is starting to kind of go up a little bit. So, I don't want to get my expectations too high. But I think Tasha Banks will help. I think Okada will help. I'm ready for MJF to come back. I miss my MJF. Um, and Britt Baker. God, yes, I miss Britt Baker. She's the fifth pillar. And I'm ready for Swerve to get a title. When I drive. So, whose house? Swerve. Swerve's house. And Prince Nana, best performance of the night. Like always. <laughs> we got to do like a dance thing and put it on TikTok. Who can do the best Prince Nana dance? Right. I cannot. Brian, win. Brian will win. Are you in, Brian? You want to do it? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Dynamite I'm in. drop in, Bryant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should I bail if y'all are man? Let's get it. All right. That was meant. Well, back to you, James. Yeah, back to you, bud. All right. Well, hey, uh, speaking of the, you know, the ladies and all that stuff, because we are a show that, uh, you know, uh, likes to spotlight uh, all the uh, accomplishments. Caitlin Clark, is that her name? I think so. Uh, Iowa, you know, uh, made all the uh, scoring records. Shout out to Pistol Pete also. And uh, that Woodyard uh, lady. But yeah, uh, you know, Clark uh, setting, the, setting the town on fire, as they say. And the thing that attracts uh, eyeballs to women's basketball, not a bad thing. So uh, shout out to her. And uh, I guess we'll keep it going with today's agenda. So I am under the impression that Brad has today's agenda. So today's agenda, we are concluding. That's right, Mike. We are concluding the gimmick match watch along series today with a final watch along gimmick series match. Not the final watch along match. What's that? This is a gimmick match. Yes, it is. We didn't even get a dumpster match. And also, the dumpster um, fire, close enough. James um, had mentioned last week that we want to spotlight some of the dark side of the rings. And if you look at the four participants in this match that is coming up, they are all have been in episodes or upcoming episodes of the dark side of the ring. So yeah. that is today's agenda. Well, uh, you know, done, 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 done. I guess I'm married to this intro. So, uh, we might as well get on to this, huh? <laughs> it is. Well, here's the thing. The match that we are covering today is Ultimate Warrior versus Randy Savage. It is a retirement match from WrestleMania 7. It took place at the LA Memorial Coliseum. Uh, I think it got moved, <laughs> but that's a different topic. But yeah. The L.A. Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, California. Look at that! Look at that beaut. weren't they gonna weren't they gonna do the Coliseum? You are uh, correct. Yes. 
dynamite fun. stuff thanks guys uh, <laughs> really appreciate that. Yeah. you really need to clean that roof i mean i think they need to get some people on there some whitener how about those um Mr. Clean uh, things that you could just use to wipe down. And make hey, the the erasers, yeah. Yeah, the sponge yeah, the erasers. Goes. You get about you get about twenty thousand erasers, man. <laughs> you, you might get something done in a few days. I don't know if you get about twenty five thousand people helping you. That needs a good pressure washing, definitely. Hey, that's a good PlayStation game too. Shout out. If, if the dirt is offend, you offending you guys, I could always go for the black and white one here. Look at how clean that is. Right. Somebody took their time. That That's is a, a beautiful really, picture. What a beautiful oval. And they have a uh, great foliage in the front part uh, before their you know, parking lot. Because nothing, you know, nothing is Bryant going better than half foliage in parking lots. Nick Look at how foliage. close they are to the football stadium. Nick Foliage was a good wrestler. Some would say <laughs> the best. Which face of him? I don't know. I, I would pick Tree. Boy, howdy. We're hitting on them now. <laughs> but yeah. So it took place at the LA Memorial Coliseum. It had an attendance of 16,158. It had a buy rate of quote, quote, 400,000. And Meltzer, once again, four and a quarter. Hell yeah. What? Adam, go kiss my ass. What? Because it's good, you piece of how? dick. <laughs> I don't know how he does any fucking rankings. I think it's just like a sign of It's the a times. good match, and it's a great story. I wouldn't say it's a good match. Great yeah, this story. Is, this is it. Yeah, it is a good match. I'm not saying one man didn't carry the other, but it's a good <laughs> match. Adam, you know what? You know what? You know what? Whatever. <laughs> oh, wait. We are doing this watch along style, aren't we? Yeah, I better Damn keep it. That. So for all of you on the peacock, uh, you know, get your cock out, and we're gonna go to WrestleMania. I have it in the notes here. What time? But I didn't. It'll was be was it seven, one hour, nineteen minutes, and twenty nine seconds. That's it. What it could be one nineteen thirty. Had to be one nineteen twenty nine. I'm on one nineteen thirty as well. I'm on thirty one so already. So it is, uh, <laughs> it is WrestleMania season, season seven, episode one. And what time code are we doing? One nineteen thirty, because we're rebels. One nineteen thirty. Forget what the timeline says. Oh, so if you uh, have your peacock out, we are going to one nineteen thirty, and I guess uh, if everyone's there. And you are there, and we are so there. We have to do a build. How that is true, Brad? Because how did we get here? And it is a uh, Bryant. Yes. How did we get here? Back at the main event number five, the Ultimate Warrior would defend the WWF Championship against the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. Premier's on. Prior to the Prior to the event, the Million Dollar Man said he had the ultimate insurance policy. As the match as the match started to turn, out of nowhere, the Macho King and Queen Sherry come out and start attacking the Ultimate Warrior. It is later revealed that the Macho Man was, in fact, the insurance policy and took the Million Dollar Money. Go to the Royal Rumble, where it is announced that Sergeant Slaughter would be receiving the next title shot. In a pre-match promo, Queen Sherry goes out to implore the Ultimate Warrior to grant the next title shot to the Macho King. And then after Warrior does this creepy head shake and screams no for some reason, we head to our main event where it's essentially uh, just a wild brawl with Sergeant Slaughter, leading to the Macho King breaking his scepter over the Ultimate Warrior's head, costing him... Hey the WWE Championship. <laughs> In the following weeks, the Ultimate Warrior would cut promos saying that only one of you, one of us, could stay in the WWF. It was not big enough for the two of us and that the ultimate match had to happen. And that is how we got to this match. All right, James, give us a countdown, bud. And in this something, you know what else is something? I guess we we're at season seven, episode one. And we we're at it? one... One hour, 
1930? Yeah. Hell yeah, we are. So, we got to uh, recognize that this started the streak for The Undertaker. WrestleMania 7 is when the streak actually started. He beat Jimmy Snuka at WrestleMania 7, and that's what started his illustrious streak until it got he got screwed. Thank God. Well, <laughs> turn up on that one. So, uh, you know, dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm not going to play music. But <laughs> shout out, Devin. And here we go. In three, two, one hour, 1930. In three, two, one, play. James, who are the announcers? Man, I'm glad you asked, because boy, howdy, I didn't take notes on that. But it is, uh, I would assume, Bobby the Brain Heenan and uh, Gorilla Monsoon. Correct. So here we have it. The brain's pissed about something already with his green microphone. I was about to say green microphone. It wasn't black. It wasn't blue, red. Yeah. Elizabeth in the crowd. Beautiful. Why are they Elizabeth. showing her so much? I bet something's oh, going to happen. Just a, just a spectator. Just a spectator. Nothing's going to come out of that. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> She's just a big wrestling fan. Wanted to buy a ticket. All right. So Super I have to ask right off the bat. Now we have the Macho Man's entrance. But what do you think she was worried about? Was she worried about what was going on in the ring? Or was she worried about sitting beside them crazy-ass fans worried she might get jacked? <laughs> Both. Because those really fans are crazy as hell. Um, all right, so we have Macho King and Sensational Sherry yeah. being brought That's out to the Queen ring. Sherry. Queen Sherry. Oh, yeah. Does anybody know why this is the mo the commencement music is the Macho Man's music? Does anybody really know why? Is he the greatest? Man, is somebody's going to know that, and they're going to make us look like fools. Well, we have the smartest man alive backstage. Do you have anything on that, Bryant? Why this is his music? Yeah, I was waiting to see that that microphone on mute. <laughs> uh, no, actually, the main reason it was was they were just picking out music, and that was just the one they provided him at his first show, and then he just stuck with it. They never changed so it from there. Random, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. It's just commencement music, dude. And face and heel, and like all throughout his career, used the same thing. Face heel didn't matter. And here's dun, the thing: I love it. He never love it. really, and he never changed his theme until the '99 version in WCW when he came back. And that was the only time he ever really changed. Yeah, it I guess this. technically WWE doesn't own this music, you know? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, what a great presentation! Uh, who's Plum, that referee? Uh, Adam? Circumstance trademark. Oh, uh, that's actually David Hebner. <laughs> well, 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 what do you know, huh? I will, but you were quick with that answer. Wow. You know what? I know she's supposed to be scary looking here, uh, Queen Sherry. Uh, she's no, sensational right here. I'm not uh I'm not saying that because I think she's hot either way. And she has a she does a lot during this match, let me tell you. <laughs> Spoiler. Everybody does a lot except Ultimate Warrior. Will you stop it? Blow up. He blowed up the minute he gets to the ring, too. Yeah, that's why he just warrior. stands in the middle. He walks. Dude, here's the thing, though. He walks to the ring and he's blown up. But that's what's great about this. He walks to the ring and they mention that. Up. But you know how the Macho Man was back then. How he writes everything down. That's I what's so interesting about this two situation. hours in the back. This is what you're gonna do. You do this right here. You got to slow down right here. Walk to the ring. Don't do stupid shit. Listen to me, or I'll kick you in the balls. You Listen, think Warrior was like, fuck, I can't run to the ring because Macho Man's going to fucking, you know, uh, wear him with a dick. Say what you want about Ultimate Warrior. He looks, he, it looks the part. He looks amazing. Which, uh, which one? Until the bell ring. This is not a bad match. Ultimate Warrior does what he needs to do. He, it's a Goldberg esque presentation. True. At least Goldberg yeah. looks believable. <laughs> That's what they should have done with him. Devin, as someone that wasn't born when the Ultimate Warrior was obviously in his prime or even after his prime, what are you thinking when you watch this stuff back? Garbage. <laughs> so, honestly, it's uh, it's not as great when we're watching it like without the sound. Like they haven't really started any action or anything yet, but it's just the you can't hear the crowd getting into it, and that's the whole thing with Warrior. I think was just the crowd's reaction to him as I soon as his God. music hit. 
everyone in the stands was going insane. Every power move, they go insane. You watched yeah, this beforehand, though, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, so you... I, do it in your mind. Yeah, but... I know. <laughs> uh, I've watched I've watched multiple Ultimate Warrior matches, but I love the Ultimate Warrior's presence and stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like, when the crowd goes insane for him, that's when I really have enjoyed him. But, do you guys think... Ring. Do you guys think the music played the bigger part in Warrior's presentation? Do you think if he had a different theme, it'd be a completely different vibe for him? I agree 1,000%. His music... And his entrance was 90% yeah. of Ultimate Warrior's gimmick. If he would have had a different theme, would he have still sprinted ass to the ring? You know? Like, I think the, the theme of him sprinting and squashing, I think that was, that was the way to go. Make him champion? No. <laughs> but, you know. It's like, hey, what? Hey, it's like when he got there, Vincent Man's like, what can you do? Uh, I can run. All right, we'll do yeah, that. All right. Uh, I can shake the ropes. All right. I can chill. do, I can do jack else? shit. <laughs> you know? I can bitch about money. No, like I said, I, obviously, as a kid, I didn't know any of that behind the scenes stuff. I just knew this guy looked awesome. I mean, this is a nice yeah. close up. Oh, I loved but... him back in the day. Yeah, I did. That's what I mean. But that's what it's for. Until I got, until. <laughs> All right. So this is a retirement match. I know we've already mentioned it, but it's a retirement match. And I think that gives away the ending of at least what the competition is going to be. You don't know that. But I'm, we, I'm saying that now. And, how old was Macho Man here? Anybody know without looking at Google? Uh, 38. 38. Really? Yeah. 38? 38 is when Arn Anderson also retired, but it was a major injury. Obviously, Macho Man is not hurt here. <laughs> he is after this match because he carried his ass the whole match. I, I'm a little sorry I picked this for this reason. Is that I a was watching this with Brandon yesterday, and he was like, this is a retirement match? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, didn't Macho Man go on to wrestle like 10 years after this? I'm like, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> and the, yeah. the announcers really didn't play to the old career versus career during during commentating during the match. Dude, they that bullshit on Dynamite. They said Atlanta 85 fucking million times, you know? Like, oh, uh, in comparison, you know, last time on Dynamite, when they were in Duluth, mind you, they uh, said Atlanta 100 fucking times. But... On this match and on this like stage, they didn't really uh, acknowledge nothing. But I think, um, is that because it got moved to that smaller venue? You know, because all the uh, shenanigans. Right. So, um, they're they're they're. It's a pretty intense start here. The crowd is really into it. Uh, I I think that <laughs> Ultimate Warrior is pretty down. pretty good. They're loud, man. They're loud, and it's that young crowd that the 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 kids that you hear. Oh, where's what's his name? Did you see him? Him? Uh, the one the document Super was Super fan, yeah. So, uh, oh, Vlad. Yeah, Vlad. Vlad. Yeah, Vlad. Ultimate Warrior having uh, much many air throwing him down. I think this stuff looks pretty good, man. I know you you hate it, Adam, but I don't think it looks bad. Atomic Watch drop. Punches. Atomic drop. Sherry. Uh, just, I can't, I can't express how much I think she does for this match. That's and another uh, thing, like, uh, shout out to Scarlet, because because Scarlet, you know, obviously, very good looking, very talented, but she is loud as fuck on the outside of the ring, you know, like, getting carrying, like, you know, heel or boo or whatever, you know, shit she needs to do. And there's her first bump. But Sherry's the same, <laughs> I think you know? you're ahead of me. Why does this keep happening? <laughs> you so I gave a countdown. I gave the longest extended countdown in our fucking show's history. 127.39. I can't okay. check it like that. I have it on my I, TV. Yeah. Congratulations. I don't have 17 <laughs> devices. No. All right, so what are you seeing right now, Adam? What are you seeing right now, Adam? Professional podcast. Oh, he's tied up in the ropes. Yeah, I, right. What the fuck? We're on the... We're on the uh. <laughs> you like how Dave Hepner separates the ropes? Like, immediately, as soon as he got tied up, he separated them. I mean, that's probably the job is the so rest, what, but What is it that you're seeing here that is such a problem? Ray, um, Macho Man is carrying him the whole match. All he's doing is swim, punching, and his punches are shit. Isn't that what the better wrestler does? He should have to carry the whole match. So now we got Macho Man on the top rope. Is he there for you? No, nope. he's <laughs> on his knee. Now he's going out. Now he's climbing up. 
you. Not just one macho man down here. He did such a damn good job to make sure that those warrior didn't get blown up. He knew where to be when he needed to be there. I give all a great job being caught. There are great workers and there are great showmen. Macho Man's a little bit of both. Ultimate Warrior is a showman. Uh, this this who, match is money. I'm sorry. This match is money. He gets slapped. Who would you compare Macho Man Randy Savage to today? I, I, can't, compare, I can't compare him to anybody. I really can't. Can. Jesus. I think he is so In my opinion, I, I, I feel like he's really similar to Seth Rollins. Okay. And I think that's what Seth's going for. Like the flashy <laughs> colors, the yeah, being arrogant, like being Babe, loud. Hey, Macho Man looked, Macho Man looked pimping. Like a jackass, yeah. like you just said. <laughs> Macho Man looked pimping. Seth looks like a, like a fucking, you know, something. He looks All like right, something. So I see what you're saying, Adam, about the big swings. He hits him in the shoulder. Well, that, that hurts too, man. I don't want to be punched anywhere. He totally missed. Oh, God. You see how big his muscles are? If you got hit by any part of him, maybe. yeah. Don't hit me there. I just I feel like Randy Savage did such a damn good job controlling the pace of this for Ultimate Warrior. Adam, do you hate all Ultimate Warrior matches? No, because I enjoyed the one with him and Hogan, but Hogan did such a good job kind of <laughs> regulating the match. So so the answer is uh he doesn't enjoy any of them, right? He he really. I don't understand the way why that he was so big. I understand the, why the opponents carried him, and he really appreciates that. That's what Adam's saying. I mean, I'm sure people liked working with him because of money, right? Ah, uh, maybe everybody said he was a dick and like kept hitting him. Well, yeah. I know how, how many people said they enjoyed being in the ring with him? I didn't say that. I said, but if he's money, the, that's what they're there for. I'm sure Kevin Nash didn't mind. You you can ask Ravishing you can ask Ravishing Rick Rude that too. I wish I could. Yeah. Boom! Wow! Like, right. Jake the Snake was ready <laughs> oh, to have go. that. Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. Oh That's a great spot yeah! Right there. <laughs> and that is not the only one. Open my oh, eyes. My goodness. Hey, great uh, heel uh, presence on the outside of the ring. Shout out to Sherry. Yeah, definitely. She loves the bump, doesn't she? I meant that in a, in, a, in a wrestling way. Jeez. Ah, yeah, she so, she get down and dirty. So then she actually kicks him in the head, and she starts whatever raking his eyes. The a warrior that is pronouns pal, and then warrior pushing her down was a little um, risky for the time. He like, pushed one, the shit out of her time. One thing for her to bump. It's another thing for him to just push her. I think there's something like uh, I think she sold there. that 100. percent Obviously, it, he it. It. <laughs> it just goes to show how much she wanted good. to be a how, how much she wanted to be a wrestler and not yeah. just a valet. It just goes to show she was willing to do anything. I, I she's she's it, the she's the hero of this match. I, and I, she's one of the ones that like when she's like accompanying uh, you know talent him. to the ring like as a valet. <laughs> You you respect her as like a legitimate wrestler. It's not like a piece of eye candy going to the ring. You were like, "Hey, Sherry, gonna fuck you up." <laughs> you know, if you turn your back or whatever, Sherry's gonna fuck you up. Like it's not like a regular valet. It's Sherry Martel. You know. Adam, by the way, you don't think Dave Hebner saw him her kicking warrior? I wonder how lenient he is. <laughs> Didn't we cover one of Sherry's matches early yes. on in our women's yeah. series? We I actually covered we one of her matches, and we covered her with Shawn Michaels. That's true. Yeah, that was kind of recent. Oh, it's all recent. We've only been Ish. doing this for two yeah. years. <laughs> Bryant knows. <laughs> uh, the Sean, yeah, the Sean Michaels match for sure. Oh man, I love Macho Man just slipping out of the ring, playing that, playing that heel. But then this match changes after a while, doesn't it? Or after the match. And now she's back yet, up there. Brad. She's. She sometimes she's bumping and she's not even getting hit. She just falls out of that ring. I was saying, man, she right. like she's a wrestler's valet or a valet wrestler, whatever you want to say. Sherry is the shit. Adam, is she he blowing up here with this running on the ropes? Are you seeing that part where he's running on the ropes? Uh, he would be in a second if you watch his chest. He's I blowing see up, it. Man. I do see it. <laughs> and then, and he, then misses. he misses. After, after he all that, he misses. He does all that. Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm just waiting for the guy to move. <laughs> for real. <laughs> I'm going to give you four rope runs to move out of the way. 
What do you think of the makeup on the face, though, slowly coming off? Like, that Sting is known for that, too. By the end of the match, it's like, oh, yeah, you're just some dude, huh? Yeah, it happens. It happens. <laughs> yeah. Man, Dave Hebner's bigger than uh, Earl, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Or was. Sorry. I know we lost him in the last year or so. Freaking Sherry up there again, bent over. <laughs> yelling. Yelling and slapping. Freaking, what is she even mad about? What is she doing? <laughs> He's just slapping, slapping the ring. Yeah. And then he pushes her out. <laughs> what do you think McMahon said to her? Just be as, be as involved as you possibly can, please. I don't know if he gave. What, what if she just did that on her own? I'm sure I Randy doubt, has to I doubt say McMahon something. McMahon gave him anything like you know. I, I hear you, James, but I think Randy probably is so, you know, the way he is. Oh yeah. Heard, oh yeah. He, he probably told her what to do. And he what probably to had do. it down to the second, like you know. At 9.32 and 45 seconds, you're going to jump on the ring and fucking, you know, start slapping the mat. Freaking warrior. Shout out that power up on. Nobody's, uh, nobody's cheering. These shoulder tackles are... Yeah. So you are seeing shoulder tackles. So why are you saying you're... I'm fast forwarding. Uh, well, look at you. Well, uh, well uh, hey. Shout out to a watch along. Thank y'all for joining us. <laughs> Devin, where are you? Yeah, she's, in, she's in the ring trying to drag him out to wake him up. I mean, yeah, all right, we're there. We're there. We're finally there, folks. We're finally there. Right? We're all in sync. How about after Warrior clothesline Macho Man? He stood up, took a few steps, and then fell back down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I should probably sell here. What is Sherry doing? Trying to wake him up? He's not asleep. <laughs> Dude, I showed some people this yesterday. And, uh, well. Well, oh, here we go. Here. Small package. Shout out. Oh! The ring again. <laughs> Look at Vlad. One, two. Slow count three, from yeah, slow four. count from Hebner. Vlad's pissed. Vlad oh, pointed out for Hebner. He was looking over there. Funny when the whole crowd counts to like ten in those situations, like yeah. uh like well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't kick out either if nobody was counting. Come back for a bump. A plus. That was a good bump. Now what? Oh, here we go. Oh, man. Uh -oh. She, Sherry uh -oh. up to... oh, look at her. Take her heels off. Oh, God, I love her. I love her. She's the best. Oh, I can't wait for her dark side to come out this year. I really can't. Here she goes. Oh, oh. she hit Randy Savage. My God, she hit Macho Man. What are they going to do now? Edmund's already waking she up. Wow. She yeah, I know. That's, a, that's a quick wake up, Adam. Yeah, that was really quick. She's oh, looking at both competitors. Oh my goodness! Oh, she's what such did a she great chicken shit heel. I love it. Run, then hit you. Run from, hit you from behind, then run. What are you gonna do, Warrior? We can see your face now. Okay, not so scary. Uh, yeah, just you tell him. I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> what a story, though, with him being inducted to the Hall of Fame, finally making up with the WWE, and then dying. Dude, right. that speech, that speech is epic, and then he dies yeah. like a day later. Day later, it's almost like he got the the burden off his back and died. That it's speech, like, that speech is something else, man. It really it is. is. And, and now really they give out the award in his honor. Yeah. True. Look, and then yeah, they I, fire his ex wife. <laughs> listen, I'm glad though that they um they they he got to do that before he died. I really am. I know that we, what they say about him as a person, but some good came out of there. Yeah. And then he made up with Jake the Snake. Jake wanted to kill him that night. If you ever listen to Jake talk, he wanted to kill him because that was made like, up with Hogan. You know, they were supposed to work together, and he he did. They ended up not doing it. Took Jake out of the main event spot like that. He was mad. Do y'all think that wrestlers like? One thing happens, and they just hold that grudge for well, forever. Jake does. And it's kind of like, <laughs> like it's kind of you know, point, I'm not gonna say pointless, but it's kind of a thing like something happens, and they just hate so and so forever. You know, yeah, like there's no uh, reconciliation or anything like until someone passes. Okay, so pretty soon we're coming up at the spot that I am going to complain about a little bit. Can't wait. Stay tuned. Here it is. Okay. Come on, these 18 demo drops. <laughs> this is the most disrespect to a finisher I've ever seen. What? You don't think so? I don't give a He's shit. Barely selling demo hey. drops. There, it looks it looks fun, and I'm excited. But you see what happens after they're done. This is a finisher. I Can would say 
The way, well, he's not way, even selling them. He's yeah. just laying there. There's one. Boom. There's two. The way that Warrior looks for the false finish is very, I think, very disrespectful. So he's laying yeah, out like I'm for Amy. Yeah, that's the way I was laying for Amy right there. I sold it. It hurt though. The third one. You're about to get Kendo sick in the bay. Yeah. Bay. Bring, bring it. Bring it. By the way, she pissed off another wrestler recently. So. Fourth, yeah. fourth elbow drop. Yes. And what happens? Seems like we're watching elbow drops. It hadn't it's sold one yet. It's Looks like, like we're watching it. like kids play each other. The point is, what happens after? The shittiest kick out of all time. All I know is how exhausted you have to be after doing that. He's sitting there breathing hard as hell. Yeah, Macho has to be exhausted. But so look at Warrior. Finisher. His eyes are wide open and everything. He, he used his finisher on him five times and he kicked out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's like a, that's DDT super kick type stuff. I, that's going to be Roman this year after Cody hits him with five crossroads. Easy. Could be. I still think it's going to be Damian uh, cashing in and getting the heel heat. I think he'll cash in with Drew McIntyre. Nope. I think The Rock is going to turn on uh, Roman. The Rock and Cody kind of get beat up and then. I think The Rock. He's hulking up or Ultimate Warrior up. I think The Rock turns on Roman Monday night. Yeah, you're probably right. And then Roman goes away for a while and he becomes the biggest baby face before he leaves. Because of uh, dis- dis- disrespect the Rock gives them, like push him in his face. You're not no tribal chief. You're not nothing. You never were nothing. You're always second to me. But if but if the Rock punks him out, that's not going face. That's being a bitch. Well, no, no Roman t- attacks him, and then the Philadelphia crowd goes crazy. I don't know what the fuck do I know? Like a spear, a spear, <laughs> and a. And a punch. I think the Superman punch is the dumbest finish of all time. Well, ain't a why, punch. Why wouldn't you start with Superman press punch? Macho. Yeah, that I don't like that move either. I don't like the press slam because I don't know what it does. You're just dropping someone. <laughs> well, yeah. now you're dropping right? your face from ten feet in there. And then the kick out by Macho. Yeah. A very weak kick out, but it was enough. Yeah. Very animated, Dave Hebner. I liked it because um, at least you disrespected the Warrior a little bit. Yeah, he Hebner, Hebner sold that two count, like Adam was saying, way more look- than they did that two count. <laughs> Who's the Warrior talking to there? He's pointing to the sky and He's saying, talking to his hands. What? There's something oh, to that, man. right? With the Warrior, he has his like uh, rich thing, right? I never paid attention to that as a kid, but I know it now. I He's saying, so I'm going to get these hands. Nation. By the way, have we talked about trumping in the front row? We have not. <laughs> He's there. Our front president. Row. Huh? Our president at one time. Yeah, our next president. Good job, Devin. We're going to get these hands. It's like Booker T before Booker T was Booker T. I didn't huh. know who else was on the first row, so I didn't want to mention any names because... What's up, Sherry? Who <laughs> else is front row, James? I have no idea, Devin. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Vladimir. I know Vladimir is. Don't Vladimir su- and his buddy. Miss Elizabeth. Don't suicide me. Dave Rebner or Dave Hebner is pissed. He's pissed. As he you should know, be. Warrior's talking to his hands, and Dave Hebner's pissed about it. He's probably waiting for him to talk back. Right. <laughs> your <laughs> hands aren't gonna do anything. Pin you already took to the ceiling. Now you're talking to your hands. I want my thumb back. <laughs> I'm not gonna I lie. I to spread soap in between my fingers. I since got since Conrad back. brought up, since Conrad brought up that this was an Indian gimmick, now I just think he's trying to channel the spirits of the Indian culture. Now. Dude, it has just, to be. I've, I can't well, get it. Ever right. Since Conrad right. brought that up, I'm like, dude, Ultimate Warrior is a native. All right, so what do we got here? We got them over by the railing of the guardrail, and there's Sherry again. My goodness, well, that's definitely not disqualification right here. No, no disqualifications. Apparently, Dave's just looking Ooh. right at him. <laughs> He's like, "Stop it! Stop it now!" And the camera's there, so it's, it's not like you can't see it when the. This camera's is a scary move right, right here, by the way. 
I think this hey, is shout YouTube out to video. Magnum TA doing uh, you know, side stuff. But well, somebody had to just reach through and touch Macho Man. All right, you gotta do I'm that. Gotta touch touch you. Touch your Y'all in. see him in the background? Homeboy looks like Magnum. You know that 12 year old kid's gonna be like, I'm never washing this hand again. <laughs> I, I see the camera guy, James. <laughs> hey, but uh, at least Dave Hebner's counting. <laughs> Would he count to 100? Because that's how long it's been. <laughs> Gotta get some advice from Earl in there, huh? <laughs> get some advice from Nick Patrick? Oh, wait, that was a slow count. We have a young Brian at home saying, Dad, something's not right here. Why is Dave do- Uncle Dave doing this? Uncle Dave. Let's do a, Dad, let's do a ref and review. <laughs> Man, they can't stay in the ring. He freaking knocks him out of the ring like 10 times. It's at least three. And nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's exhausting. All right, they pull him back in. Why are you knocking him out of the ring and then immediately pull him right back in? All right, here we go again. From the, from the heavens. This is going to happen again, you know. And here he goes. Out of the ring. <laughs> The crowd is, I'm sorry, the crowd is into it, though. And they were piping in the noise back then. Oh, from the voice heavens, one more time. Oh, now he's going to come after Elizabeth, or Elizabeth. No, no, no. Ah! Ah! Oh, is this you? match not over with yet? Macho man just got thrown back into the ring. Oh, you. Great watch along. This match could have been at least five minutes shorter. Another out of the ring moment. <laughs> this match could have been a theory, <laughs> you know, like an Austin theory. Hey, we should do this. Hey, Tom, down. <laughs> I wish somebody would put this match down. This you guys is think of my oh, face. Oh, good one. He beat right, him with a shoulder absolutely tackle. Absolutely hate this disrespectful pin. A there shoulder tackle. What was the point of this disrespectful pin? This, yeah, did, it goes nowhere. Did, did he just want to embarrass him in this moment? But wait, a shoulder tackle. And he's still down. He's still stepping on him. And it goes nowhere. But that's not the story of the match, is it? Well, we don't know that at this moment. So, thank God he puts his robe back on. That's yeah, all I thank God say. he gets the fuck out. And shout yeah, out to that Sherry. Robe, that shout robe out to Sherry for literally being on the, uh, you know, like, Dip it out when he went out. Hey, she did leave. It's over. That's a sick vest robe thing that he's got. <laughs> I do like that. I, I don't know. He's got would. his face painted would, on the back Devin, of it. Would. It's airbrushed for sure. It's, that's definitely the 90s. Oh, it's like orange, time. blue, and pink, and yellow. A this lot is of colors. enthralling right? audio, too. <laughs> kind of looks like the middle of James's shirt. The pink Floyd there. Oh, I thought that said uh, pink flooring. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, let's walk back over and put, put my foot back on him. I ain't disrespecting him enough yet. Yeah. Watch a man being a girl sport about it. I'll say that. Look at the lights on your way out. But it's not really his way out, is it? Because he's he's an announcer for, what, two years after this? Yeah, and then he goes to WCW and wrestles for like... <laughs> Here comes Sherry. She is pissed off. She threw his ass out the ring. <laughs> How dare you lose, Macho King? And look at her taking off her clothes. Thank God she did that. Shout out. Why look is she... at the flexibility, you know? So now she's picking up Macho Man, oh, yelling. Damn. I guess. Damn. Oh. Oh. She kicked him harder than the lawyer did. Oh, you don't do that to your. Uh... Uh oh, Dave Hebner, you tell her. You can't stand for this. Yeah, I'm still the referee. Thanks for right back at him. <laughs> Whoa, gonna, hey, don't hit me! Gonna, are you just gonna sit there and watch this happen? Watch Macho Man get oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. go. Or security, something. security. We don't need security. We have Miss Elizabeth. Elizabeth, do something. Oh, such a great thing. The best. And then there, another great bump I share. Over the road. So damn good. 
She is. She. Oh, and she's, he's like, he's fired up. I'll tell you, shout out to uh, Miss Elizabeth's outfit, huh? <laughs> Holy 90s, early. Stars and stripes. She's definitely a star in this one. Boom. <laughs> Deep in the heart of Texas. Oh, he just saw who it was. Oh. Oh, yeah. What do you do, Elizabeth? He's pointing at her. Like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, like Brady and his girlfriend were like, aren't they married? And I'm like, no. <laughs> like at this at this time, no, they were not married. They were already divorced now? Oh yeah. I, I don't I don't know the timeline of that. I remember seeing some documentaries. I just couldn't remember. I do not know the timeline either, Brad. They I mean, are I did watch definitely the Dark divorced but, uh, right now. It was like one of the first ones. <laughs> you know, it was a few years back. But it dude is I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. But it is definitely the shit. Like, this is a hell of a moment. You want to talk real? <laughs> you know, this is a hell of a moment. This is uh hell. I'm about to cry just watching. I'm it. telling you, it's, it's like, the shit. It is so well done. It, it transcends is. time. It is so what we are watching it. What forty years after it happened? This is why we're watching this match. It is so well part. done. So well done. It still hits. It still hits home. Well, for everyone at home, doesn't know what we're talking about. Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth were the first couple of the of the WWE, and they had broken up for a long time. And this was the moment of getting back together. They hugged. Boom. She never had an attitude. She never really talked much. She never wrestled. She was just ever, something that everybody loved, even though Macho Man was a heel. And Macho Man walked into this match as the heel, and he's walking out of this match as a hero. Because of her, a hero, a hero, hero, hero. Like this is a this is a turn. This is a major face turn. Tippity top of the list. You know what I'm they saying? Booing like, him five minutes ago. Is this is this probably the biggest like? I'm not saying like reaction turn, but like character wise turn. Yeah, that puts him all the way at the top of the list. And the people crying, women crying. They are not plants. They are crying. And then Ma- and Gorilla Monsoon. Let's talk about him selling this thing. That's a moment real. in history. That's real, bro. Thank God. Oh, chills. I get chills from this moment. And I'm looking at you two down there. Yeah, you, Devin. Yeah, you, Adam. Like, you don't give a shit. It's time to start giving a shit, guys. It is one of the best moments in wrestling history. Look at this time. redhead crying, Devin. I think it's fantastic. I, I don't know what you do. think because you're I not like giving it. me anything. I, Look at that, yeah. she's crying. I didn't live it real time, so it's all just. I lived that. it in real time, Dang. and I don't know if I appreciate it. It was now big, bro. It was, it was it was real, like it was real, and it was like everybody was crying. Yeah, good stuff, man. Cause then what does what does Macho Man do? She goes to leave. She grabs the robes. No, oh no, no, no we're not, not doing that. Not this time, dude. I'm telling you, this is the best. There is nothing that is going to top this. Face, face turn. And then, yeah, and then he and then he lifts up the rope. He's no longer the Macho King. Dude! He's no longer the Macho King. They are never going to do anything yeah. like that well. That well, no. like that. That is so good. That's almost as good as the Sean, um, or the, uh, it's almost as good as Razor Ramon and Sean Waltman, the one, two, three kid. That story. Yeah. It's, as, it's yeah. like, it's well done like that. And like it hits, it hits, uh, on it's all right cylinders. In the 100%. In the like it hits. And then he's in the ring, and everybody loves him again. I just can't believe everybody loves him again. They were booing him on the way to the ring. Yeah. Ultimate Warrior was the baby face. Well, they started with sensational Ultimate Sherry. Hell, Sherry, him. Sherry may have been a baby face when she attacked him. You don't know that. Yeah. Well, when she attacked him is what started his turn. Man. But what if the crowd started cheering her and booing him? You know, you can't do that spot. But boy, two minutes ago, there people was a are crying, bro. Sin. We we ain't seen this st- a storyline where people are legit balling in the in the stands. They're crying because they're stuck with Ultimate Warrior, and he's I'm gonna leaving. beat you. I'm gonna beat you down. <laughs> That's why they're crying because he's got to leave. They're stuck with Warrior. <laughs> we got him for four more years. <laughs> Look at Pat Patterson. Ah oh, man, that's that's a rest. That's what you call a WrestleMania moment. This right here, definitely. So that is yeah. it for the match. Um, Nailed it. Guess what, guys? What time what? is it? Is Listener it, uh, question time. Question time. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the warrior was really garbage. Oh, my goodness. 
All right. So Matt M wants to know, does it bother you when legends wrestle again after being forced to retire, such as HBK, or does it not matter and nothing is sacred because it's wrestling? Uh, HBK was forced on that, uh, not forced, but that Saudi thing or the Australia, maybe that was something else, but I don't mind, uh, the people coming back to wrestle again, but that triple H and uh, HBK thing against, uh, Undertaker and Kane seemed a little forced and it definitely should have been. It was a money grab. Yeah. Oh, yeah that one truly yeah. pissed me off. The Shawn Michaels one. Cause being Shawn Michaels was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, and like just watching him actually retire was so heartbreaking. And then when he was coming back kid. just for the money, yeah, it was then, definitely- like it was not a good match. I believe Meltzer rated negative two stars. It was okay. terrible. It was really good thing we got that in. Yeah. It's like, like it's well, really we, not a good I, match. I think this match right here proved that he don't know what the hell he's talking about because he gave this in four and a quarter or something like. I liked it. Hard angle style. Adam, it's not just about the match. It's about the complete story, though. And then Miss Elizabeth adds two stars to this match. I give Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth and Sessional Sherry four and a half stars, four and a quarter. I would say, yeah, yeah, the end end probably added two stars. It's storytelling, Adam. It's great storytelling from beginning to end. I just wish you were going to like a few moves or not is not the problem here. This isn't professional football. Put Rick Martell, World Tour Warrior, was it would have been just as good. Oh, for gosh sakes. Anyway, I don't care if they're retired, better. Honestly, um, I, it's all storytelling anyway. So, yeah, I love dang it. I love the whole story. I mean, uh, uh, what's that uh, great quarterback from a couple years ago that retired and came back in the same month? Tony Romo. I, I think he was a Patriot and I think he was a, a Buccaneer. Brad um, Johnson, I called him Fitz Magic. Stuff. What I'm getting at, Mike Whitaker. So it doesn't matter. It's uh, Hi, Mike. my blood pressure. All right. So this question, uh, welcome, Mike. I hope everything's okay. Everything's good now. Good. Uh, uh, Brian, I'd like to. Are you still watching the match? Uh, yeah, it's over. Yeah, you. Yeah, you got lucky. No, he didn't. You got lucky. Having to watch this crap again. How am I lucky? Again. All right. Anyway, um. Brian, I'd like to bring you in on this next question because I have a feeling no one else is going to know how to answer it. Uh, this is from Randy Elkari, which is just, he's just so much more knowledgeable about wrestling than his son. That's a fair point. <laughs> I know I know you were trying to make a dig, but that's actually a good... It wasn't uh, really a question. dig because he's got he knows more than me, too. Um, had Dingo Warrior stand under the tutelage of Gary Hart with the Ultimate Warrior ever existed? <laughs> what? Had Dingo <laughs> Wait, Warrior... what? <laughs> No, what? No, there's wow, no that way is a that deep. Happened. That is a deep cut there. Good God! Say that, yeah. say that again, Brad. Had Dingo Warrior stayed under the tutelage of Gary Hart, would the Ultimate Warrior ever existed? So we gotta blame Gary Hart for this. Well, this is what I'm talking about. I knew the five of us weren't gonna have a freaking answer. Hey, uh, if, Brian, if, unless uh, you got he, something, Devin. No. I would say if he'd stayed as the Dingo Warrior, there would never be it. He left Gary Hart to go be the Ultimate Warrior. So if he would have stayed, the entire course of history has changed because he would have just stayed in. He would have stayed in Dallas, and by then, everyone would have realized how terrible he was and never brought him in. There you have it. There you go. He was Sting's partner back then as a Dingo Warrior, or no? That was uh, that was before he was okay. uh, with the blade. They were the blade, blade runners Warner. before, and then Damn. he went to go be the dingo warrior. Maybe the dingo H O baby. Shout out Seinfeld. Anyway, great question, Randy. I knew that I would be, we would have been deers in headlights. I can't I, believe Sting ain't got bad problems having to carry him all the mirrors. Hey, can I get a time code? Zero. We're done. We're done. Yeah. In one fifty-seven fifty-seven. Didn't we say yeah twice? No, I asked if you guys were still watching. He said, yeah, and that was it. Oh, I thought you said, had we watched it? I said, yeah. That's what I thought you meant. Okay. Adam O'Neill. Adam O'Neill wants to know, and I have my answer. Where does the Macho King rank in the list of kings in wrestling, as in all the uh, King of the Rings? Well, it's the hierarchy. No, but who? all the other kings, like all the other kings that have ever won, who is the, Mm -hmm. where does he rank? Number two. Two. I'm with you, two, behind Stone Cold. I'd say three, then. (laughs) Yeah, Brock Lesnar. 
who after winning the King of the Ring beat The Rock at SummerSlam to win the world title? I put it number two, number three. If you want to put Bret Hart in there, no. What about Harley Race? Here's why he's number two, or or maybe number one or number two, because he embraced the character so much. And he was able to carry terrible wrestling. Top five, top five, son. I mean, Booker T was great. Yeah, he was great. And I was like, you know what? That, yeah, that's a tough one to argue because of him and uh, Charmel. That was good stuff. I'll put him number one because he's able to carry terrible wrestlers. What about Regal? Because Regal embraced it too. How about Mabel? Yeah. King Booker was pretty awesome though. King Booker. That was good. I'm still gonna go Agreed. with two. And I but I'm putting Booker three. And I'm I'm you know what? Stone Cold's three. Macho's one, Booker's two, Stone Cold's three. Well, Bret Hart. Did did, did did Austin embrace the character, or he just become a, a new character? I I am all for giving it to someone who embraced the character. Austin did not. You're right. Booker, right. Booker Booker probably made the most out of it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I think, but I think about Austin. I mean, it, it was his moment. He it made him. But but it it wasn't him making the King of the Ring thing. Like correct, correct. He could What's have done the that question? In, your, in your house, bleepity fuck. And where does the macho still remember it? Where does the macho king rank in the list of kings in wrestling? Okay, that's, because that's, there is that's, one that's king that is completely like slipping all of our minds. No, it's not. Jerry the King Lawler. It was not the slipping my mind. He's ninth in professional wrestling. Yeah, but He's he didn't become king because he won the King of the Ring. He was the king of Memphis. He was. Yeah, the king but we're talking about King of the Ring people. No, but you're right, Devin. That's not the point. question. It's a good point, Devin. That was the question, was it not, Brad? Who was the best king of the ring? No, it just says kings. That's a loaded question. <laughs> you know what he's... But if that's the case, then Holy Race was number one. Yeah, Mattress Adam Mac. Adam Mattress O'Neil. Mac is the biggest king of all. Adam O'Neill has never even had a root beer. There is the king of kings, Triple H. <laughs> Mike, you got anybody? Yeah, um, Jimmy the King. I like Jimmy the King. <laughs> Excellent Jimmy answer. King. All right, Billy Ben Jean Jones King. from Down Under. Do you think the Ultimate Warrior could have been successful heel during this time? Yeah. If so, how would you have booked him to turn heel? I would have had him attack Savage after he reunited with Liz, possibly giving her a bump. No. Immediately following their WrestleMania 7 match. I wouldn't you do could, that. You because could he'll do take that, bumps. But he'll it wouldn't be. Oh. Um, you could have done it in this match, though. But it was retirement. Like it was under the under the uh, umbrella of a retirement match. I understand that, but you could have turned him heel if he would have tried to interfere with this uh, re- reunited, and yeah. like Macho would have thrown him out of the ring, and they would have been cheering anyway because of the Liz Elizabeth thing. That's how I would have done it. Yeah, yeah. But no bumps by Elizabeth. That is not acceptable, Ben Jones. <laughs> what do you guys think? Sweet polka dots. I like to retire. Good what you just said, Brad. How uh, how like in the middle of the like reunite reunion between the two, Warrior could have been in the way. Yeah. So Macho had to get him out of the way, and then you could have Warrior looking back or something, giving mean looks, and have him and Sherry walking out together. Yeah, yeah we'll like yelling, like no. Yeah, true. You can start <laughs> them two as a pair. But Warrior probably didn't want to do that, right, Adam? Probably not. Unless he was wearing a hat. He had to wear a hat. That's anyway, I mean. that's it for the questions. Back to you, James. Well, you know uh, you know what goes good with uh, the questions? Some Devin's Delicious Donuts. So, hey, Devin, the sweeter the better. What you got for us? <laughs> All right, so I got something pretty sweet for us today. Another edition of No Mother Our Crew. Why was it about donuts if you're going to do this? It's about donuts, so I'm going to make my number one question. What's y'all's favorite donut? Boston cream. Ooh. Solid. Solid. I don't know. Boston creams are good. You know what I can Reg- Hey, up? you can't go wrong with a regular glaze. I'm, you know, like a chocolate one, that's good. But like a regular glaze, like donut, man, you can't fuck with it. Long Johns and all that stuff, you know, yeah, whatever. So, do you guys have Krispy Kreme out by you? You know yes. what it is? 
Yes. Yep. I don't think there's anything better than a Krispy Kreme glazed donut. I can eat 12 of them. A very, a very warm, fresh Krispy Kreme donut. It tastes like it like it dissolves in your palate. Melts in your mouth. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like it's I like you're a taking a it's bite a of water, like a, a sugar sponge. Man, it just dissolves. Stuff. It automatically dissolves in your palate. Mm-hmm. I'm starving. I got one with caramel. Caramel's good on it. What? Caramel on the donut. Oh, caramel? Yes, caramel. I know. I'm just kidding. It's caramel. It's always the same time when Brad's like, I'm starving. I like glazed blueberry donuts. Man. Mm, I like that too. From Duncan? Yes. Yeah, so that's, good. That's, that's a solid donut, man. Do blueberry. I'm a Duncan, Duncan about a year ago. I was Duncan close. Freaking nine o'clock. Nine yeah, o'clock. Get on the app and then wait, you know, three uh, different lines. Amy just texted. All right, so question that, number two. That fake, wait, did we get one from Mike? Yeah, he started. Yes, awesome cream. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were first. Amy just texted me that Finkel's the best uh, ring announcer, FYI. Because of last week with Samantha Irvin. And we were yeah. <laughs> okay. Shout out Finkel. I bet he liked donuts, too. <laughs> All right, <laughs> question a, number two. shot at Finkel? What the fuck is that about? No, I love it. What? That was not a shot. I love donuts. We all love donuts. We just talked about it. All right, question number two, still about food. Everyone also loves Girl Scout cookies. What's your guys' favorite Samoas. Girl Scout cookies? Thin, so, mints. thin mints. The coconut ones, bro. Samoas. Mike, you ever put Thin Mints in the freezer? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, and eat them with ice cream. Best. Yes. Put a little scoop of vanilla in between. Samoas. Tag along. I got, love Samoas, uh, Jim. Samoas are the pretty the coconut good. ones, bro. Well, they're called tag Samoas. Tag Thin Mints. I I polished off a box of samosas today. Okay, so I got to go number one with Thin Mints. Number well, number one is Thin Mints, but I have other ones I love. What? It's Samoas, man. The coconut I'm not a ones. coconut man. Y'all are all wrong. Oh, okay. Wah. It's not a coconut <laughs> fucking cookie. Like, oh, you know coconut what coconut, coconut is? It's chocolate. picky out bullshit, James. Red. Like Almond Joy? See, you're just, you're just emotional because your Kelsey boy uh, retired. I was emotional. It was a sad day. <laughs> Dude, I talked to my uh, Philly uh, friend, my Philly fan friend at the commissary today. He's like, yeah, rumor has it they're going to, you know, make uh, 6-2 a uh, Kelsey day in Philly. Because his number was 6-2, so it's going to be June 2nd. I'll drink on that day. Natural light. Look, you know, coconut, really is, horse shit too. coconut is coffee. like the ultimate warrior of cookies. It's garbage. hey -o. You say something about gross lemonade. Do you guys I, like I, lemonade? Uh, those lemonades are good. Yeah. I had an appointment at the chiropractor earlier today, and they had a, a little Girl Scout there for people coming out. I was good doing all that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know your thing. Selling boxes at the boxes. You Man. got a couple boxes? No. Peddling, I peddling you know, outside a service is a bit much. I asked oh. her, I said, you take debit? She said, no. Said, I'll get you next time. <laughs> right. Oh. All right. So... I've been scrolling through X, Twitter, X, whatever everyone wants to call it, and there's been a lot of talk, people talking about us oh, needing fuck. some new WWE Tag Team Championships. Uh, they're just sick of the two that we currently have. So I have a question for you guys for our third question of No Our Crew. What is your favorite set of Tag Team Championships ever? What do you mean? Like any company. Belts? The belt? the belt, the actual belt. Oh, attitude error. Go with this again. I don't have a freaking clue. Yeah, attitude error. You don't have a favorite like, belt? New Age no. Outlaws. All, um, all the yeah, other. the big like it was a big you know like fan yeah. looking thing. Yeah, yes, that one. Right the one that Adam has. That one's pretty sick. Yes, the World yeah. Tag Team Championships. Well, I don't yeah, have an answer. Good. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. Study well, the belt. Brad, that's not the way we know our crew. Right. I, I like the answer. first one. I like the first ones from WrestleMania one. Did anybody wrestle there? I don't know. <laughs> you're the one that said uh, you're the one that said those belts. <laughs> those belts are great from when the early WrestleMania days. I bet they are. All I right, I'm with the rest of the guys. Huh? I'm with the rest of the guys. I like the same tag team title. But I don't, you're not a belt nerd at all, are you, man? I have one belt. Remember, it was a big deal, and it's been still. It's nowhere special. I haven't displayed it at all. Uh, United States right. champ. Is it a Ric Flair championship? What you do? Just get it and like put it in the box and put it in your closet or something? It's, it's a over. United States championship. Sitting over there. 
I need a room. I need a a, a room for my stuff. So I need my own room. <laughs> I got you know that. that yeah, you know what that is. It starts as your own room. Be sure to get a uh, comfortable couch and chair. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just a nice studio room. One one corner of it would be nice. <laughs> Good trash can. <laughs> you know, probably good a trash can, uh, solid trash can. 40 gallon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 40 gallons is key. Get a good, get a good chair, get a good uh couch. The best of chairs. You're gonna be in there. You're gonna be in there. Belts, um, picture of Hulk Hogan wearing the kickout crew shirt. All of it. Hell yeah. He did that too. I yep, can't, I can't go is. on without my brothers. And then, yeah, you know, he name dropped us like 85 times. Mm -hmm. All, five, one more, all Devin? six of us. I do have one more if uh, we want to do that. We got a fourth, fourth question. Because the donut was added. Our crew. <laughs> so this one is non wrestling. Do you guys have a favorite stand up comedian? <clears throat> Yep. So I go old school. I say I, I George Carlin was my favorite. Classic. It's an old man, an old man answer, I guess, but it, it's, <laughs> I do like him. Cat like Williams. Him. I love Cat Williams because he, he does all that shit. The... Like he acts out a lot of his too. So that that's what I like about him. He recently had a Netflix uh, show yeah, come out. Thanks. He was also on the Joe Rogan experience recently. Can't wait. He's yeah, a great so I started this. Are you adding views to that guy? Alex Ansel. What about Alex Ansel? I really Too don't late, know. Baby. Too late? Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of Jimmy Carr. He's an insult comic. He's hilarious. Yeah. He's what English. Nice. I, uh, uh, I recently... Chappelle and Bill Burr. Oh, well, those two are great, of course. Bill Burr, I recently Bill came Burr, across the comedian uh, Shane Gillis about a month ago, and I've been watching everything he's been in. And he hosted Saturday Night Live the other night. That was really good as well. But I think Matt oh, Ryan's pretty good. I'd like to see him. Are he's you off of Matt Ryan? Pretty smart. Weren't you uh, like blowharding Matt Ryan a couple weeks ago? My wife pretty good. My wife was pretty big behind him, but I'm, I'm yeah. Uh, my, I think most wives are pretty big Matt Rife fans. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that is another edition of No Our Crew. James, you want back to pivot to back you, to earlier in the uh, outline for Mike? I would love to. Yeah. I would. You know, Brad, that is a damn good fucking idea. So, uh, Mike, uh, you know, obviously uh, joined us, you know. And uh, we didn't get to hear from Mike. So what better way to welcome Mike into this episode than to uh, <laughs> Mike's messages from the mouth? Mm. What you got, Mike's <laughs> mouth? Hey. It says it. Okay. So, <laughs> as we know, we got WrestleMania coming around the corner. What better way to celebrate WrestleMania, right? Brian, I need your help here. Oh, boy. We're going to do this. We're going to book this match. I think... I thought it was booked. Okay, just let me finish. I know, I'm an asshole. Going for the <laughs> WrestleMania match. So, of course, at least five out of six of these people are definitely worth going for the IC title. Yeah, not Sammy. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing How would you? Sammy main invented last year. Oh, good for him. And now he's at the bottom okay. of the card. Well, okay, then how would who would you do it? How, who's going to go after Reed. you? Ronson Reed. Like, what are we doing here? I don't give a flying dick about this. Nah, Chad's the man this year. Chad's Chad, the man. Gable. Chad Gable. Chad Gable's Gable going to go to WrestleMania and fight for the title. Chad Gable wins. J.D. McDonough should no, be nowhere near this match. <laughs> I bet it's, Shin, I bet it's Shinsake. Like Ricochet's the new Kane. Devin. <laughs> He's putting <laughs> me in where it fits. <laughs> Hey, built the same. <laughs> Chad Gable. Oh, all God. God. Oh, I think. It doesn't matter what you think. Boom. I think Ricochet's got it. What the fuck are you talking about? Ricochet versus Gunther. They had what a hell of a feud when they're on SmackDown. Flips and he's out. 
Okay. Here's my opinion. It's going to go down. The last two is going to be Sammy and Gabriel. Gunther's going to interfere, and it's become a three-way. One of the other two is going to win by pinning the other one. So Gunther never gets pinned, and he still loses his title. All right. Sold. Just saying. Well, we'll Samoa Joe. Yeah. We'll know the winner by this time this week. Yeah, by this time, <laughs> by this time, I'll be right. So, hey, listen, the three way dance. Gunther doesn't still look. Why not? Strong. And then, and then he can lose the title oh, without getting pinned. So, who are the other two? Sammy and, and Gable. Yeah. And who wins, Gable? You can put either one. Oh, so you didn't pick a winner. I think Gable could. I think Gable should win it. I think Gable's but, the, the, I think Gable's who everybody will get behind. Sammy's already a, a little to me above the Intercontinental title at this point. Yeah, I would say Gable, but I think like I said, he pins Sammy. That way, Gunther never gets pinned, and then now he right. starts going after the world title. He goes after Drew. Anybody still have WrestleMania on? Nope. Yeah. No, no cut that shit off, Mister Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted you guys to know that. So that's, that's all nice. We should have watched. Thanks, Mike. That was cool. You know what else is cool? The spirit of ninety-nine problems, but the bitch ain't one. James, mm. what do you got for us this week? Is that is that what the uh, is that what the subject is? It's what it says, ma'am. Well, hey, it is a uh, apropos. Is that the the phrase? Because there was a, well, I'm not going to refer to it as such. But yeah. But a bitch ain't one. You know, uh, obviously, I uh, took a little uh, rambling time uh, last week, tried to prove my worth. And guess what I did this week? You know, talked about 20 minutes of proving my worth. Now, didn't prove none of my worth. You know? Mm. Well, Mike, hold on. Bitch ain't one. Yeah. Hit me. Oh yeah. Jeez. What? What you want to know our crew again? Sure. I got another I, one for us. You have it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. No, not during your segment. Back to you. James. What just happened? That was a shame. Yeah. Devin, <laughs> if you're gonna step up to the plate, hit a home run. All right, what's your favorite type of Doritos? Just regular. What is regular, Brad? The original. Original original nacho cheese Dorito. Nacho cheese, yeah. Cool range. Cool range. Do you guys remember Salsa Rio? Taco Ooh, Verde sweet. is a good one. It was brief. Sweet and spicy chili. The purple bag. I'm not, I'm not a fan of purple. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <Okay. laughs> yep. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, you know. How about this the spirit of 99 problems? You know, we might as well just go, yeah, fuck up. So here's the thing. I hope that everybody, uh, you know, because, oh, last week was like, oh, let's provide worth and yeah, 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 it's all positive and blah, blah, bullshit. But here's the thing. It's the perseverance and the attitude you have within yourself to keep going. Because you can say, yeah, I'm totally going to do this. I'm totally going to do this. And then you falter off. And uh, like, like that's weak shit. Like, that's weak shit. That's faltering off. That's dummy, you know? So you got to, you know, stick to the goal, stick to the plan, and accomplish that goal, you know? And uh, I pretty much uh, want Mike to not eat my meat minute. So, Mike, uh, that's the spirit of 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. So what you got on this meat minute? Uh, Something quick and easy this week. Heard that. I'm going to do because we got WrestleMania coming up. We're going to have to have a WrestleMania party. We're going to have to have WrestleMania food. So let's do a crab dip. How about that? All right. So you need about half a pound of crab meat. If you're Brad, you can get the good crab meat. You know, take them, take them out of the shell. What's that? If you're like me. <laughs> if, 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 yeah. If you're like me, you get the... Imitation crab meat. You got stuff in a can. The same. You probably shop yeah. at Publix. You're probably rich. You don't have crab in your grocery stores? Yes. Crabs and lobsters? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I, I do. I'm just saying, I was making fun. We There's crabs everywhere. 
I got crabs. Uh, yeah, never mind. Go ahead. Hey, uh... Okay. So, you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. I'm born ready. Wrap the crabs what? in... You need, oh. you need eight ounces of cream cheese. You need a half a cup of mayonnaise. You need one-fourth of a cup of Parmesan cheese. You need three teaspoons of minced garlic and green onions. Mix them together. You need two large garlic cloves. Mince them up. You need... Two teaspoons of Who's Your Sister Sauce. <laughs> I like that one. I All heard, right, I heard guys. That one the other day. I like go, one. Get, go get the Who's Sister Sauce. You can close this window. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> you need two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. <laughs> you need one teaspoon of hot sauce and a half a teaspoon of Obey seasoning. You mix it all Obey. together. Shout out crab okay. fries. Yes. Mix it all together. Put it in a big pan and bake it at 350 for about 20 to 30 minutes. Why so hot? Because huh? <laughs> you, you only want to get crisp on top. You're doing it quick and easy. <laughs> I say quick and easy, 20 minutes. <laughs> that got me. That got me. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Go, no, go ahead, Mike. Your Mike's, had, Mike's had it with us. That was it. I, oh, I said oh, the whole oh, recipe. Is it? That's pretty good. It. it does sound good. Dip your Doritos in it. Which kind? The purple bag? <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Podcast had my ass. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Ah, oh, yeah. All right. Welcome Thanks, to Mike. the show. Yeah, what else is happening on this show? If and when you retire. And boy, howdy. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, go for it, Brad. So when you retire. So we had a retirement match today, and I've been trying to link the, the little fun game to uh, the gimmick match. When you retire. Now, we all have to assume at this point that even though we're retired, we're kind of on our own. There's no spouse. So sorry, Devin. But it just makes more sense this way because otherwise I know the answers. You I'm a step I mean? ahead. I'm a step ahead. Sorry, you too. Like, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, um, where where would you want to live if you were retired? And I have three choices here: with your younger family, in your house alone, or in a senior living center. Devin. All right. So as of right now, I don't have a younger family, so I'm gonna say. By myself in my own home somewhere, resort island. I don't know. Right. How about you, Mike? I already got this figured out. I'm gonna live by myself in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> I got three kids. Between all three of them, they can afford to buy it for me, and I ain't got nothing to worry about. In a van down by the river. <laughs> I'm gonna be down by the river so I can go fishing. <laughs> I got my land so I can go the hunting. Right path. Fuck everybody else. Leave me alone. Adam. Yeah. Let me get options one more time. Uh, senior living center. Now, I don't mean like a nursing home. I mean like a senior community. Um, younger family or a house alone. Senior senior center. Oh, okay. yeah, because he's my yeah. options changed. Because I was uh, thinking a nursing home. I want to hang out with my buddies and then um, spread comedia all across the whole. There world. it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Have you changed your answer? Yes. You. Yes. Okay. Uh, for you sure. Know Adam I'm going to go to. Well, that's that's all right. You cool. that, James. Go ahead, James. I am. Uh, well, you know, you gotta you gotta try at that. Uh, you know, why? Hey, I know. You know, my life is uh full of uh mystery and wonder. I, I'm not retired at any age. You know what I'm saying? I'm still a kid, and I'm damn near forty. So, like, age is just a number. Well, I'm not gonna say that. But, you know, retirement and all this fun and planning is just like a, a mindset. So why the fuck not would I want to live in a retirement home so I can just take trips all the time? All right. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys realize this today. I posted it on Facebook. I got an email sent to my account today that said I am now a member of AARP. Now, I am not 50 years old, but my wife is. So I am AARP member now because of her. I wish you didn't say that. Woo, woo wee. Shout anyway, out to him. Hey, shout out. She she's already outed herself on Facebook because everybody's like, you're 48 years old. 
Anyway, I am going to be at the Senior Living Center, and it is. I, I'm glad you guys caught on to what I was getting at there with that Senior Living Center. Yeah, that's, you're you're like, gonna be the one that they put uh like push up to the window and give like a popsicle, and he just like eats that side of the. Window. I don't want to be a nuisance to my family, and I sure as hell don't want to live by myself. I'm gonna live it up with people my own age and take as much Viagra as I need. There you go. I don't know about that, but since my uh, grandfather's passed, my grandma's been having fun at the. Yeah, they don't. They don't it's waste any pool. time, right? They have a bowling night. They have a, like they have poker every single night at. Six. I am glad you mentioned poker and bowling, Devin. Well, just bowling anyway, because here's the next one. If you're retired, I didn't bowling. You did. Bingo. Well, let's just pretend you said bowling. <laughs> <laughs> um. What what activity would you want to do? Would you want to, if you're retired, do you want to golf? Do you want to bowl? Or do you want to play shuffleboard? Dominoes, baby, dominoes. They slamming fives. You can play dominoes, too. I love bowling. Yeah, Devin? I'm golfing. I just recently started, like, golfing. So All right, I'm well, keep doing make, that sure every summer. The, make sure you hit the chiropractor regularly. You're an old man now. All right, you're not, what are you, 27, 26? Married. He's yeah. married. He's an old man now because he's married. And so uh, Adam's bowling. That's why I start playing golf. <laughs> How about you, Mike? I'm by myself, so I'm not doing none of that. Nobody. No, I'm you have to do one. one. You have to pick one. No, fishing's are. You can fish too. All right, this is another option. Jeez, oh man, you can't do two things. I like fishing. Okay, if you go fish yeah, yeah, I want to fish. <laughs> now you're putting fish in there. I knew what you three hicks would want to do, but that's why it's not on. <laughs> go ahead, Mike. Uh, I guess I have to bowl. I, yeah. I'm pretty good at bowl. Take good. Five me a boat. Like, what about you? What about you, James? Fishing. Fuck off. <laughs> no, uh, hey, bones will be good. It's not an option. Okay, I don't know. But you can still do it. Bowling, I get. Man, I'm not really good at, well, I'm not really good at anything, so. Bowling would be the funnest one. Yeah. Listen. I'm playing shuffleboard at the senior center because it's going to be a shuffleboard. You <laughs> shuffleboard is fun. That's that game, right? You slide the thing. Slide down. The thing yeah, it's, it's like game. tabletop curling. Yeah, it's like tabletop yeah, curling. Exactly right. <laughs> but the get the sand out of the way. Get the sand I didn't mention way. bocce. You know that's. Oh, very... and you're the sandiest. Uh... Well, never mind. So I bet you do like that. All right. So finally, one more. What pet would you want? Are you a dog person? Are you a cat person? Or are you a fish person? Devin. Meow. Yeah. I uh, I absolutely love dogs, and I'd love to say that I'd have a dog, but I've had cats for my entire life, so I'd probably most likely have a cat. And what would the cat's name be as a senior? Duh. Duh? Perfect. No, maybe like <laughs> Jeter or something. I don't know. Oh, I'd pick God. It. Purdy, after he gets us a couple rings. Maybe it'll be a Purdy kitty. <laughs> it's Mariano Jeter. Yeah, you know, like they no, know. it'd be Purdy because it's pretty close, but never getting it. I like that one. That's a good that, one. Debo would joke. be a cute name for a cat. You know? Buddy of mine named his cat Maxi after uh from the Sixers. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Go ahead, uh, Mike. Can I keep my pig? No, you you can have the pig. Yes, but you have to have another animal. You can't just pick your own pig. <laughs> pig dog. Dog. Pick a dog. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm out in the woods by myself. I want a dog. Man, you yeah, sound like sounds like a lot of fun over there. <laughs> it is. Um, all right, go ahead. Nobody shit. Yeah, you don't want to talk. You're, are you doing a podcast anymore? <laughs> oh yeah, it's a podcast. <laughs> We're the only people who talks to. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Adam. Oh, it's small dog. Small dog. We appreciate yeah, this. Small, so. yeah, just something I fit in your lap. I like the sound of that. Well, I mean, just if you're watching TV, about no, I mean, if you're watching TV, you want your, you want your, your man's best friend right there with you. Right there in your chair, right with you. Or sitting right. on the arm of the chair right beside you. James? Well, I've ate a lot of bad fish in my day, so I, uh, you know, wasn't going to choose that one. Like, I mean, I would assume the Summer's Eve was available to all of them, but I guess that was bad fish on my part. Uh, but like I said, uh, the Greyhound man, yeah, yeah, fuck up. That's a good joke. <laughs> that was good. I was like, you know, I'm going with. I got yeah. it. 
Summer Z. But uh, the Greyhound, like, I like to have a Greyhound. Or what dog were you saying? Because is any dog that you feel fit? Oh, uh, is no Greyhound. Greyhound are an endangered. Species. I said it like a couple weeks ago. Go ahead, Devin. He said Greyhounds yeah. are endangered species. Yeah. I'm gonna look that up. You better be right. Well, then I need to get one. I guess you know. Are they really? Yeah. Put the summer Z to the side. You, you know, I've ate enough fish in my lifetime. Put the summer Z to the side. I ain't getting me a greyhound. Well, you should. You should have. adopt a greyhound now. Yeah, adopt a pet, like, no matter what. Adoptions are real cheap down at the the dog track. Yeah, Here's don't go to the breeders. Go to the adoption center. It's much yeah, better. I used, to, these, I used to go to dog track. My apartment these pets a little longer if life. I were to move out of here, I would I, I've won some money off of them too. Hey, Brad, what's the next question? Um, that's it. I'm I'm taking a dog as well. Um, all right, yeah. Final question is, who would you rather have, uh, Miss Elizabeth this time or or Scary Sherry? I'm kidding. As a, as our manager? No, nope, nope. As a one night, <laughs> one night only. Sherry's the answer, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, right. You know what else is? Oh yeah. Thanks, Brad. It's Devin's <laughs> demographic. So Devin. Are you, uh, you know, pomp and circumstancing us uh, with some good uh, demographics this time? So, first off, for my demographic, not so great news. Because <laughs> Sammy Guevara has been suspended from AEW. That is actually the best demographic you've ever done. And I think we should have a moment of cheer. <laughs> a moment of praise so for the Sammy is not going. He's going to be a running he gets that the, tube to your daddy. He's not going to be on my TV. Like, who can, the yeah. reason the reason given, at least across the Because he almost was, tried to kill one of the Hardys. We know why. But why book him in a match against Will Hobbs a week later? Instead of suspending him then. That's on them. That's my I mean, only that's problem good. with this entire thing. Why didn't they suspend him then instead of two weeks after he put his life on the line? Fair question. I don't know. After you extorted him and took what you needed out of him extort? to put through TV. Did you say extort? Yeah, I mean, if he was suspended when he should have been, I guess, then realistically, he wouldn't have been put through that match. He wouldn't have wrecked his back like he did in the Will Hobbs match. What? All right, I move on. Number two. I like the, I like the boxing world. I bring it up a decent amount. Well, recently signed in the boxing world. Mike Tyson's back in the ring, going one on one with Jake Paul. Jake Paul, baby. Ah, uh, that was gonna go Cold Stone. Free on That's Netflix, it. right? It's gonna be July on Netflix. 20th, live on Netflix. Excellent. So I'm excited. I'm gonna watch as, uh, it because it's free. Netflix, they're kind of getting into this game now. We've yeah, heard that they it, bought Raw, and now they're in the box. It's definitely not gonna be a purchase, though, right? It's gonna be free on Netflix, right? I'm hoping. I, I'm i not going to say anything because I truly said, don't know that. You would assume that, but this well, is different. No one knows. They ain't done it yet. Yeah, yeah, I need to ask somebody. Who would know? But Mike Tyson back in the ring. That's I'm excited. Butter, butter me. Really? Has Netflix been done anything live yet? Ah, you both were talking. I'm sorry. Butterbean said he was wanting to come back for one match. <laughs> That'd be fun on that card. He's been for doing real, uh, I'd DDP him. yoga. I pay him to knock out Devin. We can do that in Mania, right? KOC stuff. Knock What'd out you Devin. say, Mike? I said, isn't this Netflix's like first big live thing they're doing? I think it's going to be because this is definitely before October when Raw's going to be moving over. Much earlier. And this is uh, July twentieth, so I think it's their first live. You're going thing in January, not October. What Jake, was okay. October's when SmackDown is. Correct. Smack Moving to USA. USA. Okay. I have the USA. days next to October is also when um, Raw gets off of USA. Oh, wow. So from October to January, they don't have nowhere to go. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen there. There's your fucking demographic, Devin. Why aren't you covering that? Because we're nowhere near October. But number three. On your July we here. talked about it a little bit earlier. Kazuchika Okada made his AEW official debut as a signed wrestler, and he turned heel and joined the Young Bucks. I thought it was I pretty that. I, loved it. I, loved it. I thought it was an excellent presentation. Make him a heel. 
Very well done. So I have uh, I have this as my fourth note, but Brad just touched on it, so I'll make it quick. Brad is now an AARP member, so <laughs> shout out to him. <laughs> Yep, 10% off at Outback. <laughs> Who's laughing now? You'll need, you'll need it with that blooming onion. Yeah, baby. How, how much lower yeah. is your car insurance now? Oh, uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> three three girl, three kids under 20 in the house. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Stop fucking. I don't know what you... What you what is I, did. I did. I <laughs> did. 18 okay, years shout ago. Out Devin. You see what Brad's going through? He's so he's fucking bald. That's what he went through. So I shout out bald. Devin. That's your future. Very, very bald. You're gonna get stressed out by three teenage kids at the same time. That's why Brad's living in at a retirement home. A retirement <laughs> home. Ten percent oh. off everything at Outback. Really excited. <laughs> All right. So my fifth and final Devin's demographic for this week. Brad kind of touched talked about it a little bit earlier when he said that he thinks Donald Trump's going to be the next president. Well, I said look into independent parties because I'm voting for Afro man. <laughs> Thank God that got in. Man. <laughs> I, I had up. no idea where that was going, but no. shout out. <laughs> okay. oh, I just seen the rapper Afro man was on independent yeah, party. Yeah, talking. Afro oh. man likes tall kids. Good song. Yeah. 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 You don't know it. Yeah. Not at all. Back, is, back to you, James. Hell yeah. Well, uh, oh, fuck me. Yeah, I guess I got to do. Uh, so next week is going to be a real special episode uh, for your boy here. I'm not going to get too uh, wild into it. But, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, like, I've talked a lot about, like, Hey, you know, you may not fit the mold of our champion or you don't belong here, uh, you know, type of stuff. And obviously, like, you know, non-corporate or pinky out like Brad, you know, people don't fit the agenda. But, man, sometimes it's like, if I don't fit your agenda, it fucking beat me. Like, beat me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't fit your fucking agenda, then find this son of a bitch and then have them beat me. Because guess what? I'm the baddest motherfucker you got on your roster. And uh, next week is going to be... Uh, man, I actually have to do the build. But next week is going to be uh, something epic. And I uh, I would stun a lot of you if you weren't able to get it. But I think we're going to do a... Uh, it'll be episode 100. I don't want to give too much away. But it'll be episode 100. And obviously... I did a 20 minute segment about not, you know, uh, having any part of the show and not proving my worth, but I guess next week I have to prove my worth because we're covering WrestleMania 14 and the Stone Cold and, uh, Shawn Michaels match, but we're not only covering that we're covering all of the things in between because you can't cover that match without addressing the fact that. Hey, Stone Cold may not have been your champion, but guess what? He's the baddest son of a bitch out there. Like, you know, beat him. And Vince, Vince acknowledged, you know, being a heel on camera and all that stuff. So I know I've said too much. I'm way pumped <laughs> about this episode. But yeah, I guess that is uh, next week. I actually had an answer for the next week's segment. And we are actually watch along, right? We can do whatever the fuck you want I, to. I think we talked about that. I can wa I can talk about this for ten hours. All right. So. Uh no, it's a joke. But yeah, we we're gonna do a watch along WrestleMania fourteen. Um, you know, Shawn yeah, Michaels. Please, after the crap we had to watch today, can we do a good one next week? Well, we, we are. It's gonna uh, be the well, Stone I'm Cold. And are you here for this? No, Stone I want to do watch Shawn along Michael. style because I think we need to. Be rewarded for the shit we just watched. Today was a great story. The we'll story was a, great. And that is what wrestling, professional wrestling, sports entertainment is all about. We'll do a cover, cover a match. We'll get back to that some point. Hell, I don't even know. It's their fucking show. I'm just the, you know, guy that opens the uh, episode. But yeah, um, I guess we're doing the watch long. Gonna be a great... I fuck. I could talk about this. You know what? 
you're just gonna have to tune in next week because I can talk about this match and the the fact. I mean, my God, it's Stone Cold. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's fucking go, Stone Cold. But that being said, I'm not gonna get too excited because you know I think the team machines are rolling, and uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Shout out, Mike. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey now. No, you're good. Made it. And uh as always, uh thank everybody for tuning in. And uh thank you for checking out the episode. And if you haven't checked out last week's episode, what are you waiting for? I mean, my goodness, look at us. We're hilarious. You know? So go ahead and check out uh you know last week's episode. Go ahead and check out this episode. And guess what? We're gonna be coming to you next week. So go ahead and check out that episode. Because in all reality, if you like what we're doing, you know, because it's your show, like, if you like what we're doing, be a friend, and why not tell a friend? Because, you know, it's not our show. We don't do it for us. You know, we just uh, sit back, relax. I maybe uh, mumble too much. But you know what we do? We have a damn good time. And, hey, all the troubles just float away. Like, there's nothing there. Why not smile? Ain't nothing wrong with smiling. But that being said, why not just sit back and relax and do what you do and kick out at two with the kick out crew? Because you know how beautiful sunrises are. I see you dickheads Snapchat and uh, Instagram all the time. But guess what? There's only one way you get to Snapchat those fucking sunrises. It's because you wake up and you kick out it too. And you fucking conquer the day. Why not? You're the one that conquers the day. The day ain't got shit. You're the one that be, you know, you're the one that owns the day. So why not do it? And that's what we do on your show. But thank you so much for, uh, you know, joining us. And I guess the only thing to say is we'll be back next week. That being said, goodbye. Peace.